Hello everybody, thank you for subscribing to my channel. I'm J.P. Moss, the author, researcher, blogger here on YouTube. First, I'd like to give a warm uh, welcome to all of my friends and family in Mexico. You are my family. Let no wall divide us any, anywhere, okay? Millions of people have a million different reasons, you know, and without getting into the politics of things, let me just say, folks, let's get down to the brass tacks. Thank you for being here, and if you're from Mexico or Latino background, Latin background, I send you love, I send you pe I, I hug you. Thank you. And on behalf of Benico and myself, we love you and we are grateful for you, just being yourself. And I warmly welcome you in Mexico. I send this video, all, all of this is a big warm hug to you. Yeah. There are many ways of handling problems and um, let no wall stand between you and us. Okay? Let no wall. In this video we're going to talk about channeling. What is channeling? What does it mean to channel? Uh, channeling is a psychic term. It refers to uh, the ability of a medium psychic to allow another conscious mind to enter their mind and um, speak through them. Either they type something on the computer or they do it sitting in front of an audience of people like yourself and allow someone to speak through. It is connected to what's called automatic writing, auto writing, where you take a, a pen, sheet of paper, close your eyes and meditate, and you just allow someone to come in and start writing something down. It has been used by Army Intelligence, both of these things, along with astral projection, remote viewing. They've, they've explored every avenue of uh, gain, gaining intelligence through psychic uh, information, psychic mediums, and yes, this has been explored too. Um, what is it? I mean, let, let's let's let, let, let I don't want to talk at you. Let, let let's talk together here just for a minute. I mean, my feeling, my personal take on it would be that every Sunday, every Catholic and Baptist preacher that goes in and preaches the Word of God and Jesus Christ, are so often saying that they received the message from the Word of God, that they were inspired by Jesus and God to say this to you this Sunday. And they, they pray a lot, and they say, Lord, let it come through what you want me to say to these people. Let it just speak. You speak through me and stand at this pulpit, not me. Move me aside. You hear it so often. And you've all grown up in churches hearing it so often. You are, in fact, visiting channeling services every Sunday and are unaware of this. You take it for part of your reality. We'll say it's par and par. This is part of your accepted reality. It's a fascinating fact in this video. Think about that next time you go to, ch go to church. Your minister got the message he's giving you. You ask him, where did you get that message to give us this Sunday? Where did it come from? The Word of God, the Holy Bible. But what guided you to that message? Listen to what they say. And they'll tell you the explanation will surprise you. They'll say, I got it from inspired by the Holy Spirit. In other words, he's saying to you, 
or she rather, I'm channeling a being beyond this earth. So in fact, um, they are channeling Jesus Christ. They are channeling uh, what they believe to be the Trinity. God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, they, they, they are channeling this. And it is a standard practice with the Christian doctrines, Christian faith, channeling. And it derives its origins back thousands of years, where uh, people that weren't Christian, what are commonly known as pagans, or the ones that were worshipping deities and different gods, there was uh, the Oracle of Delphi, was a lady in Greece, the Delphi Oracle. And she would stand there and give you messages she believed the god Apollo, or Zeus, Aphrodite, or Hera, or the great Olympian gods, were speaking through her and delivering this message to the people of Greece. And that had been going on for a long, long time, long before, the, the doc, long before Christianity came about, before Jesus Christ walked on earth. And then there was even, um, going back before that, into the time of the ancient Isra Israelites, where they had what they believed was the Ark of the Covenant, was a communicator. And you can think of the Ark of the Covenant, if you're familiar with Frank's box, the spirit box, the PSB7 spirit box, if you're familiar with those boxes, the Ark of the Covenant, the Gold Covenant, in the Old Testament and the Bible says, <coughs> this was a communicator with God. It was a box that people believed only the Holy of the Holy were allowed to go in. And it says in the Old Testament, a vapor cloud would appear over the box. And they said that the Word of God would speak from this gold cabinet. It was a spirit box. Researchers at UCLA have gone to, and MIT have gone to recreate the Ark of the Covenant based on the Bible's description using what material they could. Uh, no, they couldn't get a hold of solid gold. They got a, got a hold of various materials like that. And in, in accordance with the construction methods described in the Old Testament, it's a capacitor. It comes up as a capacitor. If you're not familiar with capacitors, it's an electronic component where you can take um, sheets of aluminum, aluminum if you're British, aluminum. Take uh, four sheets of aluminum, and then take four, take five sheets of wax paper you can buy at the grocery store, uh, what they use for cooking sheets, uh, cooking paper. You take wax paper and you, you lay aluminum and then wax paper, aluminum and then wax paper. And you can then roll that up into a ball or a kind of like a roll, kind of like a carpet roll. And you can put a wire at one end of the aluminum sheet and the wire at the other end and put it to a voltmeter, and you will, in fact, get... Um, I don't have one here. You take any voltmeter like that and hook it up, and it's a capacitor. It can store voltage from the air, radio voltage, anything in the environment. I've been experimenting with such things very similar, but far more advanced. Uh, for another video, another time, I'll explain what this is. Uh, I've been working on this in secret for years. The interior of this device. Why there's a mirror there for uh, quantum reflectivity. It uses very similar ideas, but it is a quantum crystal. Um, radio, based on Nikola Tesla's research, picked up by NASA scientists, and then a great man named E.J. Gold, I'm a great admirer of yours, Mr. Gold, and he began building quantum amulets. You can look those up on Google. Please look up E.J. Gold quantum amulets. And uh, that my re my projects are not going to, I'm not going to try to sell these and say this is my work, and steal his money. I'm not doing that. But I am interested in what 
what he was working on. So that's why I've got, you know, rolls and rolls of resistors and tons and tons of uh, germanium diodes. Um, I would like to cover more of that in some future videos. I did a few years ago. The problem was I got laughed at. <laughs> Turns out you just can't say everything to the public. You've got to be careful. If you're putting one thing out there, and you go to put something else out there, and then something else, everyone's going to go, what? That's, that's an overload. So we're going to take it nice and slow. It's another variation of that, of that project. But they are basically quantum uh, capacitors. And I'm not just saying quantum to sound intelligent. Quantum meaning light. And I don't mean light we see with our eyes. Light we don't see which is drawn in from an unseen reality. We'll call it the dark universe, dark energy, dark matter. Dark energy, dark matter is not evil. It is, it's, it's a name given to it because they don't know what it, what it is. But it comprises 90% of the known universe. It's the invisible universe. Surprise. Only 10% of your entire universe that you can see with telescopes you know, is, is, is what you see, is, is the visible universe. It's just, that's just 10%. There's still 90% out there you don't see. There's been a lot of debate about that. And I, I, it's funny enough, I, I began putting videos out talking about um, what Benico tells me about dark matter, dark energy, and how many extraterrestrials are there and living in that universe. And suddenly out of the blue, we get these so-called scientists who start putting out theories that it doesn't exist. They got a new theory. Dark energy, dark matter don't exist. Well, that, that, that smashes in the face of many decades of research, you know. And it says that, well, wait a minute, your gravitational lensing that saw something getting in the way of visible galaxies is, is not there. And, um, but it is there. Um, it does exist. More of that evidence will come to light in time. Uh, as I said before, I'm quantumly connected, <coughs> fused. My, a soul is a quantum string of light, and it's a fingerprint. Every soul is different. There is a way. <coughs> there is a way to fuse two souls together into one, where they both have the same fingerprint, and. Um, she did that with me, this extraterrestrial human hybrid girl did that with me long ago. And so we are in fact one singular uh, soul in two different uh, bodies. And uh, we share things and knowledge and she guided me to E.J. Gold's work and these devices. And of course this is old technology, even before Nikola Tesla. As I said, even in biblical times long ago, people were using similar technologies given to them to communicate with higher dimensions. The quantum crystal radios communicate into higher realities. They draw in faster than light particles that are unseen. And because they're faster than light, they're moving through solid matter. Dark energy moves faster than light, is what I'm saying here. And because it's faster than light, it's another, it's another reality, it's another dimension. This dimension is governed by the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second, where in the higher dimension of that unseen universe, it in fact moves, fa this energy moves faster than light, so they're in a higher frequency. And what these quantum crystal radios do is they draw in that high frequency, or so it's believed. Um, and, you know, a lot of it goes back to what's interesting is the Fermi Lab, uh, it's called it the, the Fermi Laboratory. They um, use germanium uh, receivers, germanium detectors. Well, in Gold's projects, and indeed these projects use a great deal of germanium at the core element of them, uh, and it's believed that they're beta blockers, so they somehow block certain fields or allow certain things to come in, and he sells them to the public, 
for that reason. He says that this will help you communicate with ghosts, ETs, or he says it will improve your health. Well, I took it to the next step and began upgrading them and increasing the potential, their uh, capacitance, and of course the, the germanium. I'll give you some idea of what I've been, what, what of an upgrade I'm talking about. This is a raw germanium ore wrapped in copper. It is pure, 100% uh, germanium. It even gives off a bit of a, a, a frequency of its own. It's not radioactive, but if you put a you put a Geiger counter Geiger counter to that thing, it does give off a tick. And uh, it's it's not harmful, but there's so much of it there. Uh, it's safely kept in this plastic Tupperware container, so it, none of the radio fields interfere with with anything in the environment. Uh, so, anyways, as I said, the connection with Benico is such that we are the same soul finger fingerprint at this point. You know, we 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 are the same uh, in energy. We it's a quantum fusion of uh, two souls into one. Now, that should make for channeling very easily for that person, and vice versa with her, me and me and her. Yes, it does. And it, it comes very naturally. So a lot of my messages I put out there on Facebook are inspired by what I'm receiving from her. I did try that once here on YouTube. I did honestly try to put out some channelings where I was sitting here and you know let her let her talk through. Um, I've taken the videos down. I'll put them back up. But again, it, it's about public relations. If you put out too much stuff, you tend to get a public that it, it's 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 just too much. Okay, you can't do that. You know, I'm saying this. I'm saying that. I'm saying this is my area of life. This is you know, I didn't go looking for this. It came to me. You know, everything I brought you is not something I decided to go do. Uh, it all happened the way it did. So we have a very beautiful connection between us, a very beautiful soul connection. Uh, we are a singular uh, soul divided into two different bodies. And um, as I said, every soul has its own unique fingerprint. And when she quantumly fused with me, um, we have the same fingerprint. We became one energy, one, uh, one soul. <laughs> and that is now, that has been a part, she walks around inside me for many years, observing the world I see and hear what I hear. And um, she exists and lives in another dimension of space-time with the extraterrestrial human hybrids who do live on this planet and come and go from this planet into this other dimension and come back again. But she is with me all the time in that respect. When one of my channelings in my videos did talk about a, a woman who would ascend to power, I'll be putting that video back up, because it was about three years ago I did this. And I spoke of the woman going to power and failing. Very interesting stuff. Uh, was she talking about Hillary Clinton? You know, there was a lot of talk about that, about, about the woman, and what that means for all of you when she fails. Okay? I got laughed at. And the only reason I take it down is because I'm thinking conscientiously let's put let's focus on one thing at a time here I can't overload the public with multiple odd things that you're taking as, as kind of odd and just kind of go one one direction here for now get that out and go to the next thing get that out go to the next thing um, you don't want to overload the public so it I think it would almost be sacrilege to say to a Christian, well, I can channel 
somebody that's not Jesus Christ. And um, I think it's interesting that uh, there are many star seeds in the spiritual new age, what they call the new age movement. Um, and there are people out there who are extraterrestrial contactees like myself who are turning over to a Christian doctrine and they're saying that Jesus is the one who has all the answers. Well, more power to you. I'm not going to put that, I'm not, I'm not here to put that down. I'm not, I find it interesting, but I don't have your luxury. I don't have your, um, I, I have no issue with it. In fact, I was even going to a church recently, a Baptist church just down the road from me. I found it quite nice. Um, I was a saved Baptist as a teenager, you know, in, in Texas, Pelican Bay Missionary Baptist Church. I, I went before the congregation. I professed my faith in Jesus. So he's in my heart. I, Pastor Don McKee then took me up to the tank and he lowered my head and I baptized you in the name of the Father, Son, Jesus Christ. And everything went just like that. It was a very wonderful ceremony, you know. And so how do I end up here talking about a connection to ETs? Well, it shouldn't shock you. It shouldn't be something that you find sacrilege or against a religion. This is not a religion I'm talking about here. I'm not bringing you some kind of religion. For me, I know what I know from my experience. And it's a memory in my mind. It is something that's quantifiable and can be validated with my equipment. I can pick up with my equipment uh, voices in my room of a female identifying herself as Benico, telling me she loves me. Uh, I put that on YouTube. I can quantifiably put out there for my spirit box sessions that, yes, they're not dead, though they're in a dimension near the dead. These Zetas and extraterrestrial human hybrids are, in fact, delivering messages to many of us through this medium and uh, and channeling them and connecting to them directly, okay? And nothing is telling us to forsake our faith or religion or whatever. It's not asking us to do this. However, my memories of my experiences with Benico are not a religious fable, and it's not some kind of a, a daydream or something that I went off to invent. And it's not a fad, and it's not something that I can... Uh, it's, it's memory is something that's there, and every time I go back to that memory and the experience with her, and I talk about it with people, or I bring it up, or at the moment, just in the, off the top of someone grabs me in the street, let's tell me about that experience, and let's say it's a test. I'm going to get the exact right there. They're going to they're going to be getting. I'm I, I'm going to be getting it exactly as, as I remember it every time. It's the same thing each time. Six years. And I've been giving the same testimony each and every time. So it, 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 it's not... When it's a memory and it's an experience, that's, that's what we're called experiencers. Because we experienced something. You know, we, we, did, we didn't go out there and, and invent something. We're not daydreaming. We're, we're, we're not called daydreamers. And we're, we're, we're not called, um, you know, uh, you know, some people might call us psychos or nutcases, but the, even these people are, are deluded and fantasy prone, are going to be creating something in their mind. And then they've got to try to remember what, what they said. And then they've got to, hmm, let's, let's write down what I told these people today, so when they ask me again, I'll know what to tell them. This is people seeking attention. These are people that, that, that want to get some, I've got something to share with you, Okay. And I think that you will benefit from this more more than I am. I've already had my experience, okay? I know we're not alone. I know we're being visited by extraterrestrials. And so I'm, 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 I'm here in these last years making YouTube videos and writing the books I've written and Facebook groups like the Seventh Dimension group on Facebook that I created in 2011. I'm, I'm here to share with you... Um, something that I think you will come away with and benefit from. I'm not asking you to change your religion. I'm not saying let's create a, a religion and call it Benico. And let's all go to a church with a, an effigy of her standing there. She wouldn't like that. Um, 
I have my connection to her, but I don't ask you to do that with her, too. And I don't ask you to believe me. I ask you to at least listen and give it the benefit of the doubt. And there is something here I think you will benefit from, you will come away with. I don't know who you are. I don't know who, who watches these videos, but I know that for every, this is a message for everyone on earth. So it doesn't really make any difference to which group I'm speaking to. And I believe it's a wonderful message. It's a message that says that in the 21st century, there's going to be contact with her civilization and other civilizations. NASA is going to be proving that those civilizations are, in fact, real. So is SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence under Dr. Shostak and Jill Tarter and the others. Uh, they're going to learn that... Dr. Frank Drake's equation of how much life could be in the galaxy and are they out there is, is indeed is valid, it's real, and indeed many of the things late Carl Sagan said is genuine too, very genuine. He often said if civilizations were visiting this planet, they'd have done so long before now, and indeed they have been, um, and the evidence is out there. And indeed, Mars was once a thriving civilization. Uh, many of them fled the red planet's disaster. It wasn't a red planet then, it was a green and blue planet, and came to the Earth to live. And they are locating ancient technology that's millions of years old, buried in Russia and different parts of the world. But how did it get there? Well, again, this is from the refugees from a dying Mars. Um, and everything that Benico told me about Mars is true. And we're dealing in time scales of millions and tens of millions of years. Not tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands that you human beings are used to dealing with. The human race at the most has been around maybe 30,000 years as a race entirely. Well, that's that long. Um, the time scale of the Zetas goes back tens of millions. The Mantids are seven foot praying mantis race that have come up in my infrared photographs in the forest near my home here in England. Now, what's interesting is that Linda Mouton Howe, a researcher, UFO researcher, hypnotized a lady from the 1960s who described being taken into a craft where she saw seven foot praying mantis beings. The, there's an, an, an ancient tribe in Africa that worshipped a god called Kagan. And Kagan was a mantid, a praying mantis that lived in the forests in Africa. And Kagan and his beings that are like him, the mantids, told the African people, we created your race. But it was an often isolated species. That is, in fact, true. They went on to make the Zetas, and the Zetas have made the hybrids and so forth. And, and there's a, they've actually seeded many civilizations across the, the, the galactic plane and across the galaxy, this galaxy at least. That will explain why so many of these beings visiting this planet are humanoid. They're cousins to the human race, like the extraterrestrial human hybrids. I have to use that term like that so you know I'm talking about beings that were cross-mixed with human beings and Zeta Greys, as they call them. And that, 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 that's, that's, that's a big bunch of stuff to say in a few minutes. And that's, that's a lot to lay on you, okay? And there's even more, a lot more than that, a great deal more. But we'll leave it at that for now. But channeling, does it deny the existence of Jesus Christ as the Lord or God, or Son of God? No. Um, does it say that his powers didn't exist? No, it doesn't. Um, does it say there's no God? No, it doesn't say that either. Uh, I've had people speculate that maybe a creator-type being instructed the mantids, the oldest civilization in the galaxy, to go around and create humanoid life in their image. And they are now on this planet serving as guardian sort of the guardians that kind of watch things. Uh, whoops, did I just say angels? 
But how will they appear to human beings? Will they look like seven-foot praying mantises? Well, they did to the African tribe. But then they also appeared to the African tribe and other people as beautiful-looking humans. And mantises, and it, it is a race of insects, have wings on their backs. And so the personification of wings was carried over when they projected themselves in the human form to these ancient people. And we go back to the Anunnaki, who had wings on their backs, things like this. Remember, on Earth, it happened on Earth. 400 million years ago, there were giant insects on Earth before the dawn of the age of the dinosaurs. Never lived. Before any reptiles crawled on this planet, there were giant insects. Giant arachnids, giant scorpions, as big as a car. Millipedes, as long as a bus. They were, they were huge. They were huge, huge. And the Earth climate allowed their existence, but there was great changes and destruction. I'm not saying they're from the Earth, but it has happened on this planet. And so they come from another part of the galaxy, another where dark energy, dark matter, um, is something that they can see with their eyes, they, they can interact in this other dimension. They evolved. They're called the ancients. The Atheans, they have different names, but mainly ancients. It is believed that they're more than a billion years old, which is quite old. Um, so they, their existence predates all reptilian civilizations. People talk about reptilian civilizations in the galaxy. Their, their existence predates all reptilian civilizations. And they may even be the forefathers of their, of their kind and uh, other creatures that weren't humanoid, but were intelligent, that were reptilian-like, that had wings in their backs. If you want to believe in dragons, or whatever you want to call them, that's fine. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a fascinating, you know, walk through things just from this video. 32 minutes. Thank you for watching. It's a lot to throw at you. It's a lot to have in my head. Um, but nothing to be afraid of. It shouldn't challenge your reality so much. It should glorify it. Be proud of who you are. You're human, for God's sakes. Love yourselves. Be happy. And put aside these issues of being Caucasian or Hispanic or Latino. Put aside these issues of Muslim versus Christian. Put aside these issues of political battles between Democratic and Republican. There's a wider universe out there. Or you can say... Maybe not, JP. Perhaps you're just making all that up. What evidence have you got? Carl Sagan also said extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Well, I've got some pretty extraordinary evidence I have brought you with my photos that have been proven not hoaxed. But does that say alien? No, it doesn't. Does that say those are mantids? Well, they look like what people have described. And we've got Apache Army attack helicopters flying in that area daily keeping that forest under constant surveillance. You've seen it in my videos. And blue helicopters and black helicopters, always in that area. Always in that area. Um, and I'm just going to be the guy that says, well, here's what I got. I went in the forest alone without any support from military or whatnot, you know. Having had my experience with loving sweet Benico, who's very much she and I are the same soul, and so I felt very comfortable stepping into that forest. I felt quite at home. I have a lot of what she knows. And so I know getting that evidence out of there, what they will give me. I know a little bit about their character, their personality, how they're going to be with me. Very extremely passive, very observant, very logical, rational. And very, very highly, I, I can't say it enough, mature. They do see the human race as being rather adolescent and childish. Even the most so-called educated, mature psychologist who believes in, or, or accountants or insurance brokers who tend to think themselves to be quite calm and placid people are indeed, by their, by, even by their standard, quite childish, adolescent, 
that's the impression I got. They just, from their point of view, even my going out there calmly taking pictures, from their point of view, it looks like a, uh, uh, let's get some pictures. <laughs> Sometimes I pick up things from them in the woods. It's a little weird. Their perception of me is, is like a big kid going, let's get some pictures. It's a little creepy. I mean, that, that's how they see me. And I'm not, I'm not acting like that. In my opinion, I'm walking out there going, hmm, okay. But they, even in my videos, there have been some videos where, you like, one of them is turning to look like this, and it's kind of hunched over, it's got that, those mandibles, it's looking over. Then I've gone back to that very spot time and time again. Can you come back to that spot and stand here? People are like, how can you do that? <gasps> well, because I know what I'm dealing with. And they don't, um... I don't know. It's like it's like going to a grandparent's house. That's what it feels like. It's like visiting your grandma's house. It's very calm, very old, but they, you know how grandparents watch you. What are you doing, JP? Mm -hmm. I saw you sitting there watching television. You were in the backyard. Mm -hmm. I planted that tree before you were born. I put that civilization here before any of you were born. <laughs> Let me tell you about the dinosaurs. <laughs> that was just yesterday for us. <laughs> the dinosaurs, just a few years ago, 65 million years. <laughs> really, I don't want to know that. Keep that to yourselves. I'll just get the pictures. I don't want to know it all. First, I always go to the woods with that one thought. Do not reveal everything to me. I can't take it in my head, and I don't think anybody can handle it. All right, let's leave it at that. <laughs> so I hope my experience, as an experiencer, what I'm bringing you as an experiencer, will enlighten you and settle you a bit. It's okay. From Benico and I, uh, we're one soul. I love her very dearly. She loves me. We've connected. We are one soul. You know, I need no more than that, and she needs no more than me. We are both in the same soul. We are one soul in two different bodies. <coughs> and as she is sitting, as I'm talking, she's speaking out as well. And the, the message is, we love you. We love you. We have a lot of tremendous compassion for you and a tremendous amount of understanding that you're not ready the last election of your, your presidency said many things to us the demographics showed a vast majority of republicans love the message of a down home uh, down home kind of president that wants to put dinner on the table and he wants apple pie, baseball and some NFL on Sunday and barbecues with the family and but it just doesn't say but the message has also said many many things about what he what he sees as American values and what you responded to in that man's down home message it said many things because President Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton <coughs> We're very open about UFOs. President Obama went on Jimmy Jimmy Kimmel, and he said things. He dropped a lot of big hints. A president of the United States sat on a TV show dropping big hints about UFOs. And just about a year, not even a year later, and we have this kind of a turnout in response. People chasing and loving a man who said, ah, bullcrap to that. But no, he didn't actually put down UFOs. Uh, but his overall statement was something that re resonated with your need to get into something you feel comfortable. We were listening. Benico says that too. We were listening. We were watching. And it, I think you can look at the demographics of the America on the red and the little tiny bits of blue for Hillary. And Hillary even said in her campaign, if I get elected... I'm going to reveal UFOs. Well, and here again is that massive red outcome on, on America. There are, that's saying something to us. Something they're not surprised with. 
the Nick on them have told me that they're not surprised. They know the outcome. They know the future. They see what's going to happen. The vast majority of you just aren't ready for this. You're just not ready. And it can't be forced on you. Democrats are learning lessons. People just aren't ready for an American president to come out and say, this is going on. And then you in the UFO communities and uf ufological researchers and all of you, listen to me very carefully. Listen to what I'm saying very carefully. Let's all stick together. I'm not putting out fear here, but listen very carefully to a man who's now going to be president who said he wants to put Edward Snowden on death row and do everything in his power to get him out of Russia. And the American people support that man. And there's nothing wrong with those values, nothing wrong with apple pie, nothing wrong with family get-togethers and barbecue and a green lawn and a blue sky. There's nothing wrong with going to church and celebrating the life and the message of Jesus Christ and his, his energy, his teaching, and the, and the man standing at the pulpit is channeling him. There's nothing wrong with any of that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It's for you. It's for your you, what you need in your time frame. And when you die, that's what you get when you pass on. This is something that helps you make your adjustment with your soul for your development. This is what you need for your development. But you're still at a kindergarten level. You can go from one extreme to the next extreme in your elections for that country is the biggest country, the most, one of the most powerful countries on the planet if not the most powerful, serves as a demographic for the ETs watching. Hmm. So are we ready to hop down there, guys, and say we're here? Uh, no. no. It wouldn't be fair on these people. It seems to be frightening people. It's causing them some issues. It's making them uncomfortable. No, that's not what we're here to do. It's going to be a little more time yet. There's going to be a lot of discoveries and revelations to come. But again, as in the movie Contact, the, the E.T. said to Ellie, small steps, Ellie. Small steps. That's the way it's been done for billions of years. Listen to me. That's actually true. There's plenty of time in this galaxy. Okay, there's plenty of time. You've got hundreds, you've got thousands of years of humanity ahead of you. There's plenty of time. There is plenty of time, but there's going to be some big things coming up in the near future. You may find troubling, but it's okay. It's all part of it's all part of what needs to happen. But I won't be the guy that brings you doom and gloom. I've 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 elected not to do that. Okay, but major things are coming. Big big things are coming. And it's necessary, it's needed for growth and development. Sometimes you need to have a few wrecks on your bicycle to learn how to ride it properly. I love you all. We love you very dearly. Benico sends her sweetest love, and I send mine. Thank you for, for watching.